Strictly Sickly is a medical-related talk show. While informed, we are not medical doctors. Any advice given on this show should not be substituted for a professional medical opinion. Always consult your physician before making any changes to treatments or routines. So we're here today with Strictly Sickly on Not Our Normal Day and Not Our Normal Time. And Not Our Normal People. Yeah, Not Our Normal People. And I am here with Brad. Howdy. And we're talking about abortion. Yeah, something I'm totally qualified to talk about is a white guy. Well, if you want to get into technicalities, I don't have a uterus, so... Oh, okay. Well, uh, Do we archive this podcast? Yeah, you can watch it on Facebook after. And you can listen on... Yeah, yeah, there's a Strictly, there's a strictly Sickly page. Um, But, okay, so... Some states did a crazy thing recently. You act like you're not calling out like one of your best friends. Fucking Alabama. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> 50th in education, first in dumbassery. Um, yeah, so... And Georgia's about to follow suit. Um, and, and Texas doesn't exactly have uh, the best... Uh, laws on the books when it comes to this uh oh hey mina oh yeah i've uh, she's been sick lately how are you feeling brad i'm feeling i'm feeling good i've been feeling good lately Allie says being a male hasn't stopped most men from weighing in so not all men it's okay for you to weigh <laughs> in because you're on my side oh that that's what makes it okay yeah that's well that's kind of a hypocritical argument in itself too and i'm not really here so much to weigh in is to just like kind of poke the argument along because because honestly I have my th- I have my thoughts on the situation but the but the deal is is um I, I mean just as a dude like I'm not a hundred percent like educated about you know how the how all that works well right? I'm not a hundred percent educated on how all that works but. well and that's the thing and and I think that's the problem is the people that are making making the decisions about this argument are even less educated than us about the argument about the process about what all of it is like we're we're not experts but we're both educated people you know we we, we had we had the well i mean shit we at least sat down and googled some things yes. first to make sure we had our I facts straight things. Before, you know, right, that's that's more than what most anti-vaxxers do, you know, and yeah, and it can lead you down some rabbit holes or whatever, but... Or I get waylaid to a pro-life site, and I'm like, why, why am I but, here? But the problem is, is that the people that we are making responsible for guiding us and making this, this argument and, and do this legislation, they're not even doing that. They're getting their facts fed to them by people in their own echo chamber. But you want to know something interesting. The person who signed this into law, a chick. Yeah, that's that's what's really disappointing about it is like <laughs> Google internalized misogyny. <laughs> yeah, finally a woman's like getting something done and she's in charge or whatever. <laughs> it's and just it's regressive just, it's, as shit. <laughs> and it's just the worst possible thing ever. Yeah. Um, so you were gonna look up some questions or something, weren't you? Well, no, I. I Our common pro-life I, arguments. I, yeah, I have that, but um, so let's talk. I think first we should talk about what actually got passed, like what's going on. So this new this new bill, I guess, got passed the the other day or whatever, and it is the most restrictive um, abortion laws in the the history of the United States. Actually, is that that's correct, right? And so it says that abortion, basically for any reason, is considered murder and is punishable. With 99 years well, in prison, and right? And the people will argue that they're not punishing the women with this. They want to punish the doctor who gave right. the abortion. It would okay, so, treat so, them so, like so a that's, murderer. Some, that's some clarity. Like, yes. you know, if, I, if I'm just a casual listener to everything that's going on in the news, I think that the, the woman's going to jail for 99 years. But they want to put the doctor in jail for, mm-hmm. for doing it. No matter what the medical reasons are, correct? Yeah, they did not put any exceptions in for rape, incest. I'm not actually sure if there's exceptions for severe medical horror, but I doubt it. Because they actually posted uh, 
uh, someone had said, uh, I really need to Google this, that if you have an ectopic pregnancy, which what that is, is the egg supposed to implant in your uterus. I'll, I'll Google while you're talking. Um, the, an, an, an ectopic pregnancy, the, the embryo is implanted somewhere else, like your fallopian tube, um, too close to your cervix. It's not in the right place. And it will kill you. <laughs> they want doctors to only fix this if they're going to move it to your uterus so it can grow. Newsflash, that's not a thing. If you have an ectopic pregnancy, you have an abortion or you die. These are your two options. Abortion or death. Um, there is no saving the baby. There is like one case in history where a chick had an ectopic pre pregnancy and implanted on the outside of her uterus and at 26 weeks the, she was able to have the baby. That's like a one in a billion thing that happens. Okay, I consider do you I consider them a credible source, Vox. I yeah. So, if you're a liberal, um, well, they're calling it a near total abortion ban. Okay, so that means there's got to be some kind of exception here. So I, I'm looking for it. Uh, I love it, when I look this up. It says, "What states ban abortion? Is Alabama a Republican state?" And the next post is, "What is Handmaid's Tale?" <laughs> that sounds about right. Um. It aims to outlaw all abortions, including those for unwanted pregnancies that are the result of rape and incest. The Alabama law and other similar laws in Missouri, Ohio, Kentucky. Oh, it's, they're calling out their friends, by the way. Uh, Missouri, Ohio, Kentucky, and Georgia, with more on the way, is even more broadly shocking because Roe versus Wade has been the law of the land for nearly half a century, supporting, you know, I, Republicans have been trying to get rid of Roe versus Wade forever. Roe versus Wade make them angry. Big the, angry. The new Alabama law endorses the end of this project. Some members of the Alabama legislature. Uh, what is to be? Oh. Anti abortion degrades pregnant, unborn child, fetal person. You're just blah, mumbling. Blah, blah. Sorry. Uh, American Medical Associate reminded doctor that women bar rarely become pregnant because of real rape. Ooh, God. I don't like okay. the wording in okay. here. Okay. Uh, real rape, first off. But second off, okay. Uh, pregnancy God, from damn, rape. That just felt dirty. Pregnancy from rape is, is not super common. Okay. It, it's not super common. I'll buy that. If we're, if, we're talk if we're talking facts or facts or facts, yes, uh... Pregnancy from rape is not real common because yeah, usually rapists from... aren't interested in doing that. Well, and you even know. if they do, it's got to be the right time of the month. It has to actually oh, yeah. only like fifty percent of pregnancies end up viable. And one in every four pregnancies ends in a natural miscarriage. Most of them just happen before you notice. Right. So it really isn't a common thing, but it is a thing that happens. Right. It's more and so so is incest. Incest is an unwanted incest. And pregnancy through incest or rape is more common when it's a repeated thing. So like a girl that's getting molested by a family member over the course of years. Now here's the thing to think about: Are we defining rape as people that have sex with minors? Technically, that is rape because it is they rape and it is molestation. But I bet you a million dollars they're not considering that rape. They're just considering that an unwanted pregnancy. They're they're not going to call. Sex with my, but I don't think it's okay to ask your eleven-year-old kid that got pregnant from stepdaddy or daddy or whoever that's in your family or whatever. No, you have to have this baby now because it would be murder otherwise. And now you're endangering the life of your eleven-year-old child and your eleven-year-old child's child. Um. As people are pointing out in the comments, yeah, it is a thing that happens. People do get pregnant from rape. No, no, no. We're not saying it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't happen. happen. And we're not even saying it doesn't happen frequently. We're saying statistically, out of all the people that get raped, it's very low in, in that. It, it, that's one of the things we were talking about yesterday is you can make statistics and, percentage, and percentages that's match anything, anything you want. Like, we can we can warp every statistic that's thrown out there to match what we want it to say and the, and they can in the other side can make it match whatever they want to say so i can say well statistic and, and we just repeated it statistically out of all the people that get raped only a fourth of them get pregnant uh, so that's a low number because you know do less people get raped than have consensual sex you know and then it it gets bigger and bigger and bigger but then if you but then you talk about you talk to somebody that has gotten pregnant through um, unwanted intercourse 
And then, you know, suddenly that statistic doesn't mean shit. Yeah, if it happens to you or someone you love, the statistic no longer matters. Um, There was a case pretty recently of an 11-year-old girl that got pregnant because of rape. And they're they're talking about it a Here's lot the deal. Oh, because I, I know. this law would deny her the ability to get an abortion. Right, and here's the deal: but any sex that an 11 year old girl is having is, 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 rape. Ra- is rape. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if she consented. It, at no, 11 years old, she cannot you can't consent. can't consent. And I think one of the big root problems with all these abortion arguments is, as a country, is is United States citizens. We don't fucking understand consent. Of course not. Like, like I think that's the first part of the problem, is before you even oh, get, no. get to babies, we don't understand what consent is. Uh, yeah, reported rapes. That's another argument I've had there with people, go. Catherine, is they'll, I'll say, oh, well, there's a ton more rapes than report. Well, how do you know if they're not reported? Because just because they didn't report them to the cops doesn't mean my friends ain't told me about all the crap. <clears throat> but, uh... It doesn't matter. You so, so when we're talking about rape, first you're talking about consent, which is something we don't understand. And by if you're under the legal age, you cannot consent. This is a funny argument I've had with a few very staunch Republicans where they go, it's a slippery slope. If you let gay people get married, then people will want to marry kids and animals. Okay, well, I'm really worried about you now because kids and animals can't consent. And if you think two gay guys getting married, two consenting adults, adults getting married is somehow the same thing as someone marrying someone who doesn't consent, then you're confused about this whole issue, and I don't want you anywhere near my children. Yeah. Or me, for that matter. Uh, yeah, the people that make the slippery slope, are, slope, slope argument, argument... Don't understand consent. Don't understand consent, and, you know, probably have raped somebody without knowing it. That's what I worry about, is if I don't understand consent, then I've probably done something bad. And just because I wasn't reported or somebody decided that... It wasn't that bad or whatever at the time. That doesn't make me any less a rapist. No. Yeah, it's it's a horrible thought when you think about it. So you say that's terrifying that you think that somehow so gay suddenly, guys equates to. Uh, but you know what that does? You know what that does to statistics? That says that fifty percent of people that are having sex are being raped. Man, suddenly those numbers get really weird. So you got to be careful with the statistics. But, yeah, I, I really honestly think that the first part of it is that we don't understand consent or we don't want to define consent in a way that would make us culpable for having to deal with it. I really think a lot of it boils down to not trusting women to tell the truth and make their own decisions. The consent argument falls into that category and the abortion argument falls into that category. Right. People don't think women are capable of making decisions or telling the truth. Yeah. Oh, it's a balance of power. We don't want to lose power. If we start letting you guys make decisions about your own body, then suddenly that's another thing that, you know, men don't have control of. And I don't want to sound like the, like a third wave feminist there, but that is actually a thing that's going on. Historically, men have controlled the world. And in in, you can have as many of us saying that we want equality as much as you want but everybody wants control everybody wants power to some degree whether it's over their own body or other people or whatever and that's just kind of where it goes so the first part of the argument is like consent and control and things like that and this slippery slope crap and but it gets to a point where when you're talking about that to me like I so this new law it makes it asinine that the people who are having an abortion after being raped are punished harsher than the people the rapist. Th- doing the rapist. Well, that's uh, whether you're for or against abortion, it doesn't matter where you fall on that. You have to think that that is horrifying in itself. Like, if you're totally against abortion, you should still go, but that's bullshit. Like, uh, it, I, it's I, like, okay, fine. I'm going to let's let's say I wasn't pro choice, right? Okay. And I said, Um, nobody should be able to get an abortion just because they got raped. Like, yeah, that wasn't their choice. That's really bad for them, whatever. But they they shouldn't be able to murder their baby, right? But in that same breath, I would be like, but guess what? Rape daddy now has to get his nuts pulled off by a tractor trailer going one mile an hour 
while the family gets to watch or something. You know, it's, there should be some horrific, like, there is no horrific punishments for rape. They just let a, a preacher guy Oh, go. yeah, go because his faith was going to protect all the ju- kids he was going to rape. Yeah, yeah. It's like he was convicted of the rape. They know he did. It was a 14-year-old girl. But they didn't give him, like, any jail time because the judge said he was a good Christian. Um, there's an example I have is I, I know a person who's very pro-life and historically very Republican who is a nurse and has still participated in abortions in case of rape and incest. Mm-hmm. Because it's considered, a, it should be considered a medical emergency. And that's actually what she posted today, is rape and incest are a medical emergency. Well, in, at one point, they were defined as medical emergencies. Uh, Chris says they aren't concerned about consent, only whether God considers immoral or not. So they think people are willing to do one thing that's immoral against their God, then it's a free-for-all. My only argument with that is, I, I traffic a lot of atheist Facebook pages. A surprising number of them are against abortion. But are they are they um, against are they for laws that prohibit the choice? Yes, that's that's weird. Like, so me like personally, I'm against abort. Like in my own personal life, I'm ag- I would rather have a baby. Of course, I'm also not a rapist. You, I'm somewhat sane in that point. I hope you know, but I think you can be like not for abortion but still not try to meddle in everybody else's life up to a certain point like um i mean i'll let you in on a little secret here i'm not for abortion i don't think any, otherwise i would have had I one when think, i got knocked up at 20 <laughs> I, I, I don't think anybody that's pro-choice or pro uh, you know abortion law it, where it would allow no for one abortion. likes it i don't think anybody's like yeah we should just abort all the babies like like nobody wants because what everybody's afraid of, what they're making these laws for, is people that are just going out and getting pregnant and leisurely having okay, abortions. So but the that's people not a that thing. use this phrase, I'm okay with abortion, but women shouldn't use it as birth control. I've got a newsflash for you. No woman is using this for birth control. Do you know how expensive abortions are? <laughs> okay, so this is going to sound stupid coming from a guy, but it's my understanding that having a medical abort, like with a licensed medical professional that's doing the right thing, is pretty much as painful as having a miscarriage. Like, it's not like a pleasant fucking procedure. I'd have no clue. I'm... <clears throat> uh, from what I know about it, it's not, like, pleasant. It's not, it's not like... Yeah, I've talked to some girls that have done the abortion thing with the pills, and they said it, it sucked. Yeah, like the... Oh, um, the, the Plan B thing, the morning after pill? Mm-hmm. Is what you're talking well, about? no, I'm talking about that if you are... If you're still very early pregnancy... And you go in for an abortion, they no longer have to do a medical procedure. Oh, you take pills, you go. They home. basically poison you. Yeah, they poison the fetus. Yeah, or the it's not even a fetus at that point. Um, Chris says, but the politicians all claim it's the, yeah. The politicians are real, just crazy about their religion. The funny thing about religion and politics is they're not supposed to be. And they together, really, and they really don't do well together. Historically, this is bad for everyone because you can make the Bible. Or any holy book, say anything you want to, and I'll flash back on slavery and how they use the Bible to keep that going as an institution. And I know it sounds like we're dancing around the topic that we're, but we're, we're trying to set the stage for all the things that are wrong with this argument in the first place. The whole argument's faulty. It is. It, it, the pro, you know, you know what really hurts me about the argument is I actually can see both sides of it because I'm not. I'm not for, you know, if we're going to word it this way, I'm not for killing babies. I, that's, that's not what I wake up and I'm like. It's a fetus at eight weeks. But, okay, so another thing I wanted to mention is a pregnancy is 40 weeks. It's about 10 months. People say nine months. Because you consider pregnancy from the first day of your period before you get pregnant. So when a doctor is stating, talking about your pregnancy and they say you're six weeks pregnant, Two of those weeks you haven't actually been pregnant. They're counting from the first day of your last period. Miss period, right? You're, like, first day of your miss no, period. No, first yeah. day of the period you had before you got pregnant. Uh, okay. So if I have a period in September and I get pregnant in October and then I miss my period at the end of October, they're counting from that period in September. 
Gotcha. The first day of right, your so last period. It could potentially add four weeks. Two weeks. It adds two weeks. So a lot of people will say a fetus is viable at 21 weeks. It's viable at 23 weeks medically. Mm-hmm. And Allie just said it's a fetus at 10 weeks. It's a fetus at eight weeks. There's a little leeway in the math there, just for the record. It was three hundred dollars seventeen for for that, a pill. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, I remember, I remember being with somebody that took a, a Plan B or whatever, and that was excruciating to watch. That's that's the the morning after what you know. And well, they, and they Plan B, su- well, it's not, but that's a Plan B pill is really stopping the egg from implanting or fertilizing, right? Which is like a, what a lot of birth controls do. They don't actually stop the whole conception thing they stop it from yeah, i know it's not 100 percent, but i do know it, it it severely messed up her system oh, yeah. temporarily like it, it was like vomiting and cramps and, and like severe cramps like it was it was as bad as when she had a miscarriage later and having an abortion gets progressively worse for the uh the potential mom as the pregnancy goes on. So if for some reason you're having what they call a late-term abortion, um, abortion passed, what, 16 weeks? And you know what? It, to kind of go back to what you said, you know, they're worried about women using this as a birth control. Well, if that's what you're worried about, quit fucking with birth <laughs> control. First off. That hurts. I, I'm mad. I'm angry um, about it. Yeah, that's another thing they try to do is they regulate the birth control. And then people are like... So the arguments I see when I when I argue this with people, which I really try not to do because they're always assholes, is, well, why didn't she just use birth control? Well, I will let you in on a secret. Uh, my first kid was a condom baby, and my second kid was a birth control baby. It's not 100%. Jesus, like, you're beating the statistical curve into the ground. Like... Not only are you the one percent, you're the point oh one percent, because because you beat the one percent on the <laughs> condom, and then you beat the the one percent on that. Well, I'm allergic to latex; they're less effective. Whatever. Um, but what would be great is if you were using a condom and birth control at the same time, and somehow. And this is a thing that happens. But they'll argue, okay, well, why didn't you use birth control? And I'll say, okay, I did. I still got pregnant. Well. Uh, why didn't you just get fixed if you didn't want to have a kid? Let me tell you how hard it is to get fixed. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a horrible freaking process too. Because I've sat in on y'all's discussions about it, and even though, even with problems with your lady parts, I, where it's like a life saving procedure, they don't want it. They're like, no, you're too young to have this done. We so we'll just pour I, some roto rooter. I it. had two kids. I was 26, and I had comorbidity. So I had PCOS, endometriosis. Blah, 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 blah. And they still didn't want to do it because I might decide to have kids in the future. Um, which, you, but if they think we can't decide to take birth control, <laughs> if they think we're not capable of making that decision, what makes people think they're going to let us choose to tie our tubes, something that's pretty much permanent? Well, they don't even think that you can decide for yourself <laughs> if you want to have sex. That's the problem. They're they're taking all the decisions completely off of you and putting it on the dad. I saw uh, that stupid, horrible post about the worst thing that can happen to a father. Oh, is, that, is, is, is like I was like, what about the person that's actually having to go through that? Like, uh, Plan B is the morning after pill. Uh, so that's you have to take it before conception, basically. Uh, the abortion pill is what they give you if you go in and you're like only yeah, two later. weeks pregnant. And and you know I know why she's confused because the people that lobbied against Plan B when it first came out were calling it the abortion pill. So and it's some very hardcore pro lifers are against IUDs specifically and the Plan B pill because it often doesn't stop conception; it just stops implanta- implantation. Okay. Um, and they think that's a form of abortion. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, a lot of oral hormonal birth control does that because it prevents pregnancy in three ways. It'll present, prevent fertilization, implantation. Uh, it'll either prevent it from meeting, prevent it from implanted, or pre- prevent it from growing. Um, you don't always know which. That's why a lot of people are against birth control. Because they feel like it's a form of abortion. Well, it's ta- it's tampering. 
is is how they view it is you know if you live by god's will or whatever then anything you do to tamper with your own body but that's you could make that same stupid argument for changing your diet then you shouldn't eat greasy tacos because you know or you shouldn't cook your meat because you're tampering with the way but you know another whatever another thing about birth control is it actually made me able to have my son Mm -hmm. Because I have endometriosis and PCOS, I had to take hormonal birth control for six months, although only four months before I got knocked up. Um, anyway. Oh, you know what? Kat brought up the thing that you screamed at me oh, about. Oh, the temporary the, vasectomies. The, the, I was going to mention that in a moment. But birth control is not just for preventing pregnancy. It's the only reason I have ender. Yeah. Without that birth control, I never would have gotten pregnant. And people want to deny that to women? Well, and I, I don't think people realize the bigger... Uh, maybe birth control is a bad name for that medication at this point in time because we have found so many other uses. So many off-label uses for it. Yeah, yeah, hormone regulation, endometriosis. Uh, I mean, I just put my daughter on birth control because three days out of every month she pukes her guts out and cries because she has a migraine. Uh, what's the thing that you guys take the metformin for? Polycystic ovarian disease. PCOS. Yeah. You need it for that. I Sorry. I, you guys have so many things I can't <laughs> remember anymore. But so to, vasectomies like tubal ligations can happen in a couple different ways. They can use clips. They can snip it. They can snip and like burn it. Uh, completely irreversible <clears throat> if you do the burning <clears throat> thing. All this stuff is horrible. <laughs> if you clip it, it's very likely that it what's won't. With, what's with all the clipping? Oh my if, God. Okay. No, a clip is like. They put a taco... Like a like chip a, clip? Like a chip clip, yeah. They, like, <laughs> chip clip it. They, to keep they, it fresh? They chip clip your tubes. <laughs> um, the problem is, is that's not so much with the working all the time. It it, it, it self-reverses. It sounds like a bad idea. It's like, we'll fix this with a paper clip. Don't worry about it, guys. That's like... That's like taking a cracker wrapper and oh, I'll use this as a condom. It's cool. They'd really need to work on how they do vasectomies and the percent rate at which they're reversible before we start using that. Right. Okay. And then so, the men so start I'm screaming about how we can't regulate their bodies, and I'm like, uh, uh. Uh, oh, <laughs> now you kind of now you get the point. Um. So I always I always thought vasectomies were reversible. I mean, I don't have a vasectomy. Not always. Um. You know, because I feel like. I take proper precautions, and if I do get somebody pregnant, then you know I will take care of my business. I don't. They're I don't more, necessarily. They're more I'm not likely, against them. I just I don't have one. They're more likely to be reversible than a tubal ligation. Okay. And men are able to make this decision, while they won't let women make that. Yeah, decision. like like the deal is is it, it, uh, how stupid is this? Okay, so basically, we have tubes. Me, I have tubes, you yes. have tubes. As humans, we have tubes that have something to do with one part or another of the baby-making process. I, as a man, at 18 years old, can just walk up into the doctor's office and be like, hey, dude, I need you to, like, shut this down for a minute because I want some sweet poon. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, that's, like, 500 bucks. But if snip, you snip, are snip. a dude that is married, I do believe your wife has to sign off on it. Like, my husband had to go in and talk to the doctor before I was able to get my Well, there's the side. flip side of that argument. I think that's stupid. Yeah, they they, uh, they nixed the male birth control pill because the men didn't like the side effects. You mean the acne and the weight gain and the vomiting that we have to deal with every month? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome. Maybe it was the part where, you know, they're on birth control, but they're still not getting laid. And they're like, why am I taking it? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. <laughs> No, you're not. You're an asshole should, who secretly thinks they should call it the incel pill. Okay, oh so, but yeah, like at 18 years old, you know, just like I, I don't even I don't even know how to do long algebra yet. I can just walk in and be like, yeah, hey, I need you to clip the inside of my wing wing so I can go, you know, testicles. But yeah, prowl around. Uh, you guys can be just like, hey, I've got like my ovaries are about to explode and. Uh, there's horrible things going on. I'm 23. I'm an adult. And they're like, I don't know. You might decide you want to make babies at some point. I don't want to do it. A vasectomy is much less invasive than a tubal ligation. Yeah, I do know what's involved. Like, okay, so I'm really sensitive about my junk. 
but it's just like a quick incision. Like it, it's they just give you a local for it, and it takes like ten. They give minutes. you a local and a Xanax. Yeah. Um. They cut open your sack. They the, <laughs> off and they the send other you up. thing they send you home with an ice pack. The other thing I found super interesting is um, I went in for like I said the tubal ligation when I was twenty six, and after many months of uh, you know debating this with my doctor, who thought I could still pop out babies even though. I'm horribly Even though he's, Ill. he's the one that actually knows how. But like, eventually he went in and he did a scope and he said, okay, I was wrong. You cannot have more kids. It will be very dangerous. I don't even think you could get pregnant, but if you did, this would not go well. Right. And so he called my insurance company and he said, I need y'all to pay for this tubal because if she gets pregnant, this is going to be bad. And they said, we can't pay for that. It's a birth control procedure. Yeah. Because the way your insurance and everybody in America is looking at it is like, well, if it's dangerous for you to get pregnant, you should just be celibate. That's Allie, shut up. You should be able to do long algebra by 18. I don't know. I'm 34. I can't do algebra. Shut up. Stop. Don't deconstruct this. I'm fighting for your rights here. Maybe you should learn to do some long algebra. Yeah, for a tubal ligation, it's a laparoscopic surgery. So you get three incisions. They stick a camera in there. They clippy clippy, and you have to. They inflate your abdomen with air, which, if you've ever had an abdominal surgery, sucks. Um, it rises, it goes to your shoulders. It's awful. With a dude, they don't do any of that. Just snippy snippy. Done. It's fine. See, I feel like I want to do the vasectomy thing. Like, I, I mean, I don't. I probably don't even need if one. My sperm that, count's so freaking low. Will you do that on anyway. camera for my show? But that's what I was saying. Like, I want to do. I need to go get the HPV vaccine. I keep saying I'm gonna do it, and I wanted to like record it or whatever. Me getting it. Like, it's not something I really need. A lot of times they won't let you record stuff like that anymore. Uh, they will at uh Target, which is part of CVS. Or mm. Oh no, no, I said it backwards. Target and CVS won't let you do it, but Walgreens will. Okay. Walgreens will let you do it. But I want to, just to make a point, you know, I want to go do it. It's a responsible thing to do. I not, I'm not necessarily at risk. Like, I don't need it, but. I don't know. My daughter got hers, and she's just fine. And my son will be getting his when he's of age, too. Yeah. HP vaccines so, for so all. I, so I feel like I want to go get a vasectomy just to make a point. I, and, like, I don't really need one, but whatever. But anyway, you were going to look up pro-life for arguments. Um, or you were going to make pro-life for argument. What are some pro-life arguments y'all have seen that, you know, are interesting? Are any of them interesting? <clears throat> the CVS clinic won't let you take or record any pics. Yeah. But a lot of yeah. places won't. Uh, HIPAA. Yeah, it, it just depends. Which, uh, HIPAA is weird because you should really be able to waive your, it's your right, so you should be able to waive any right that you want. But it's also protecting, like, doctors and stuff. Like, because, like, when uh, when we went to go get tattoos and stuff, I kind of wanted to record it. And in the – or, no, it was the it was the piercing. They're like, well, we don't want you doing that because people will see it online and try to do – you know, they're, they're protecting themselves. Another thing too. they're ta- trying to protect is anything you might overhear in that environment, which could be another patient's medical information. Right. Um, but I, I, do know, I do know there's places that, that aren't going to be pissy about you doing that because because i've seen videos of people getting vaccines they let so. me record them cutting my leg open that one time so yeah i mean it just it depends on the environment depends on the doctor or whatever and you're waving your own hip or right um but yeah like you said if they're trying to protect somebody else's medical information like if you're in one of those more open rooms or whatever so uh the family research council which has been around since 1983 it's a year younger than i am has this really interesting site because it's it's a it's a pro life website, right? And I'm trying to get in. What I was really looking for is I was looking for like the super right wing like crazy arguments, and what I found is this article that teaches right wingers how to argue with pro choicers. And basically, you were reading these to me. It's throw a bunch of words at them till they give up and walk away. Well, what's funny is they they have they have a bunch of they have like facts in here. And in their their the facts on this website are technically correct. Like they they're they're not they're not warping stuff around so much. But it's got like these little instructional bits and is like when you're arguing with a uh pro choice person do this and like a lot of the instructions are is well when they ask about this just throw a bunch of facts at them and i'm like wow 
Like, what if those facts aren't related to what they just said? And basically the instructions are like, ah, who cares? You know? But, um, I don't know. It, it's almost like dirty arguing. And I almost don't want to ask him because I don't. Some of these I don't have a, well, a go good, to a different site. A, a good answer for. Well, I think it. I think it's good to address. Allie it, says just that we shouldn't have an abortion to absolve ourselves of responsibility. Uh, the biggest pro life argument I see is, but it's human life. It's murder. Well, what defines human life is a. Okay, so that, a debate. So, so that that's the that's the very first part of this is arguing from a standpoint of science. Like they're basically defining life, and this is an important argument, really. Like if if you're worried about ending a life then how do you define life well most people do it from a morality standpoint or some kind of religious standpoint or personal political opinion so, which is something they bring up but what are the scientific building blocks of life there's like four criteria for it it's building blocks of life but then everything's life <laughs> well and, and that's okay so so that's what they're doing they they they, they boil it down to the four thing to let me look away so I don't misquote it. I, I know I know what they are. Well, I was I, gonna say that if I was going to have to put some sort of marker on abortion, like it has to stop after this point, they want to say heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. But in the medical setting, a heartbeat is not what defines life. Uh, brain activity is meaningful. Brain activity. Uh, you can be without a heartbeat for quite a while, and your brain's still chugging along. A fetus gets has brain activity. That that's when it changes into a fetus at eight weeks. It has some form of brain activity, but not until like twenty weeks, twenty three weeks, is it meaningful brain activity. So that argument's kind of neither here nor there. But it's quite clear that the earliest human embryo is biologically alive. If fulfills the four criteria needed to establish and this is the sign and this is correct this is the scientific uh explanation for biological life that's metabolism growth reaction to stimuli and reproduction those are the four things that you have to fulfill to be considered alive if you go by that by the very very basics then yes your zygote is technically alive they go on to talk about, like, when they're arguing with us, we're the bad guys, right? Yes, we're the bad guys. Um, Pro-choice response, and they immediately go into it. Some defenders of abortion will concede that the scientific proofs, but will argue that the entity in the womb is not yet a person. So we'll say that it's alive, but it's not a person. And, this, and their response to that is also correct. But we got to break it down past that. Not a person is decidedly unscientific argument has nothing to do with science and everything to do with someone's own moral or political philosophy, though that someone may not readily admit it. And, and you know, it goes on to, like, just keep reciting the facts and blah, until you wear them down. But let's actually talk about that for a minute, right? Okay, so it scientifically, a zygote does constitute life by the four building blocks. But we're saying, okay, it's not really a person yet, whatever. Def defend that. That's going to be really hard to do. I, I I don't have a good defense for it because it, it really is, a, especially for me, is like a guy who's not super educated about this whole process. But it's a gut check with me to go. I get it. It's the bill. It's it's technically defined as alive, but it isn't a person yet because it's it's not thinking. It couldn't live entirely on its own for any amount of time outside the womb. Um, it's basically not viable, right? Um, if, if we're defining that zygote as 100% alive, it's a person, it's a being or whatever, you also have to include bacteria, sperm, trees, uh, amoeba living in water, bugs. So every time you use antibacterial hand soap to wash up after you've been yanking it for half an hour, you've basically committed mass genocide on a level five times that of Hitler. Like, so if you're if you're gonna go that far to define it that much, you know, just swallowing after a BJ is like the most horrible abortion. I'm you pretty can sure think spinning of. counts too. Whatever, I'm just throwing that out there. I, you know. uh, Catherine says the only thing that I don't agree with is if there is no medical issues with the mom or baby, but mom doesn't want the responsibility, but dad is totally willing to raise the child alone. That's the only man right. I feel like isn't fair. Okay, so I have a few 
issues okay, with I, this. I, I like that response no. because because it's very it's very clear about what yes. she thinks, and, and she's not being rude or anything. No, so. no, but I, I, because I have made this argument in the past, and these are some arguments that were made to me. Okay. How do you know the ba- man isn't abusive? Um. So let's say we're going to remove that right. If the man wants to keep the baby, she has to go through with it. Because he's going to take care of all the medical costs and he's going to take care of the baby. And it's not going to hurt her. Let's just assume that she's not going to get lupus because she went through the pregnancy. Which is the thing we're, that happens. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking in case where there's no medical reason for it to go. Well, she there just, was uh, no medical reason getting pregnant would hurt me and I still came out of it with RA. But let's say that's not a thing that's going to happen. Right, okay. So you don't know what's going on in their private life. Um, you don't know if this man is abusive in some way. That's one of the arguments that was made to me. You also really don't know if it's going to hurt her medically in the long run. Right. Texas is not so good with the maternal death rates. Or, um... Fetal death rates. (laughs) Yeah, like, I I think we're like... 50th right I, I think we were 50th and we're better now but I'm not totally sure but I, I do see that I think Alabama just went to number one cause <laughs> <laughs> but I do see that argument but then again well okay and, and we're, you're also talking about absolutes here so there's a, there's a few things I, I don't think she it's nec- a very I know I'm I, just I'm, I'm addressing yeah, yeah. it because it's a good argument yeah yeah I, I don't think she necessarily has a bad argument I, I I'm not really for allowing people to leisurely have an abortion. They, oh, I just don't want this. I am up until 22 weeks. To a degree. But I, I don't like it. I don't have to agree with it to decide that, you know, I think the legislation c- should cover it, right? But, um, like, in her case, where there's all these other alternatives that are presented, I don't I don't think we should be able to legally stop that yeah. person if it's not viable. But I, th- I think we should have some kind of mediate. Like they should have to go like through mediation or counseling. It, like if if you're that early in the pregnancy, where there's more weeks ahead where this can happen, maybe there should be like forty eight hours of mandatory like counseling where you're where you're talking to like a relationship counselor or something like that where you can be evaluated for like what you're talking about. The other thing I would mention is that, like, people who say adoption is op- an option, adoption is not a cure for pregnancy. It's you not a cure, s- no. You still have to go through that pregnancy. And I hate being pregnant. It sucks. I don't think I'd do that again if someone put a gun to my head. Re- re- reread her comment again. There, there were some specific the points that I got The only thing that I don't agree with is if there are no medical issues with the mom or baby, but mom doesn't want the responsibility, but dad is totally willing to raise the child alone. She doesn't feel like that's fair to the dude. And I, I, I really have no... It's not fair. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what it was. That is such a rare case is what I was going to go with. Like, almost nobody is doing that. I'm not saying it's never. It's a thing that happens. I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not a thing that happens. But I'm saying you're it's talking. It's not the common. Right. Also, what what if it's one of those rape situations we're talking about? Because the dad can, because rape daddy can say, well, I want the baby. And now all of a sudden she's barred from being able to do anything about this because her rapist, her attacker, has decided uh, he wants to be a dad now. By the way, if you're a rapist, you're probably not good dad material. So that makes the state even worse because not only are you like, hey, you have to we're forcing you to have this baby, which is, you know, baby slavery, by the way, we're going to give your baby to a rapist. I mean, what do you think is going to happen to that baby there after that? There are some that? states where rapists can get, uh, you know, rights. Um, oh, yeah, awesome. So, next comment is Chris. To me, it's irrelevant if it's alive or not. You can't use somebody's body against their will. We literally have donor laws where you have to consent to being a donor before you die, or no one can legally take your organs after you're dead, even to save a life. Dead people have more bodily autonomy than living women today. And That is true. If I'm dying in a hospital... And you're a match, and you're sitting there. They can't make you save me. That's your body. It's true. It's this is my liver. God damn it. <laughs> um, um, Kristen, that's always been my main argument: the brain versus heart thing. Your heart can stop, but doctors will continue to try and keep you going as long as you aren't brain dead. 
then you aren't technically dead. So if we follow that train of logic, not being dead until brain dead, then you wouldn't be alive until you have a fully functioning brain, and that doesn't happen for quite some time. Well, um, in you, one of the facts we looked up, kind of, you have was a gut punch. some brain activity. A fetus has some brain. That's why it switch. That's what the internet says. Why it switches from whatever to fetus is because at eight weeks they exhibit some rudimentary brain activity. So we're talking electrical activity, but not a fully functioning and, brain. Yeah, and okay. you well, can that, be in a coma with some brain activity. But um, I would I would go farther and say meaningful brain activity. Dreaming. Uh, dreaming is the one there. I throw out there, but a response to stimuli covering your meaningful body, response stuff. to yeah. stimuli. Because uh, an interesting one is when I was pregnant with Andrew, we went uh, skeet shooting, and every time someone would shoot, he'd freak out. So I had to go back inside. <laughs> like, okay, that's that seems like a person to me. Um, if we can find a way to put a parasite in the man who wants it, or if I mean. Science has come a long way, a very long way, on viability ages. I have uh, stepbrothers who are triplets that were born at like 26 weeks in the 80s. And a few years before that, they would not have lived. Mm -hmm. It was right after the develop of surfactant, which is uh, something they can give babies when they're not, uh, their lungs aren't developed to, to make them able to breathe. Because otherwise, your, your lungs just stick. So they had a sudden development that made them able to really lower that, that that age of viability. And I really feel like we're going to hit some mark where we can just put them in a pod. And if that's the case, take the baby. Fine, yeah. I want to stick on that for a minute. Like The the more that medical science goes further and in, in, in makes it closer and closer to like at the point of conception, we can just put it in a bionic egg or whatever and then hatch our children so you don't have to carry – like it makes this argument harder and harder. It's like, it because it makes it, it a moot point. Yeah, because it because on at some point you get to you know after one week it's considered viable because you could technically do this thing, and think about it in terms of um, cloning technology or whatever because that doesn't happen in a womb. That happens in a lab, basically in a tube. You take you take from one host put the DNA in there and you grow it or whatever. Technically, that's viable at the point of creating I don't know, they that grew that clone sheep and another sheep, so... But they, they, just, they've done other stuff I, I after know, that, though. That but that's what I'm getting at, is so if you use the point of viability as your, as your sticking point, your argument point, that point of vi vi viability is getting closer and closer. So right now, we're at, what, 23 weeks? 23 but, weeks. But... You're saying that it could be like 20 weeks with with current technology, like if something's going on? No. 23 weeks is a marker. So my mom was a labor and delivery nurse for 15 years. There are some clear differences between a 21-week fetus and a 23-week fetus, okay. one of them being translucent eyelids. Can't fix that outside the womb. W wouldn't it just develop if, like, you keep it They cooking? die. They die. Okay. They, they Their bodies cannot deal... Another thing they have is ECMO, where they rapidly push oxygen through their lungs. It's another development we've had in the past couple decades. Mm -hmm. The problem is when they're that little, all their tissue is very friable. It just falls apart. That's why fetuses get uh, the retinal bleeds. They very often go blind. It's why they get brain bleeds so often, intestinal hemorrhaging and necrosis. Uh, you have a baby at 23 weeks, it's got like a 50% chance of survival. But this 50% chance of survival, it's probably going to have some issues. It's right. probably going to have asthma. It's probably going to have had a brain hemorrhage. Right, because it's not going to go through the rest of that developmental process yeah. in the womb. Their tissues eventually. just aren't, they can't handle it. You try and put them on an ECMO machine, rapidly pushing air through them, and their lungs just explode. <laughs> ha 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 no <laughs> but it, we're just not capable of fixing that right now but i think if we develop but i don't think we're of, far from it no unless we keep doing backwards bullshit mm -hmm. like that you know because we keep setting ourselves back um the thing that Kristen says also the thing that with adoption bothers me first of all there's 107,000 kids and so we all agree the foster care system is jacked and it's expensive to adopt a child. I'm all for giving your kid up for adoption if you want to go through that. 
and you want to give your kid up for adoption. Yeah, the, the giving your kid up for adoption process is not the problem. It's, it's the adoption process. First off, it's, it's gentrified. It's it, Yeah, it's not just prohibitively expensive. It's if you're anything other than straight white Christian couple, you're going to have a hard time. Yeah, Stra- it's... It, you, in, even if you're a straight white Christian couple, you're going to pay through the nose for it. If you're anything other than that, if you successfully want to adopt, you are going to go bankrupt trying to do it, you know, unless you're a cousin of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. The foster system it, as a whole is what I, I know there's success stories in there, you know, and there's good people. But, but it's mostly trash. It's mostly trash. I, I, I know lots of pe- I know a good portion of people that went through the foster system and they're not functioning adults like. Um, uh, Chris says, if I ever got pregnant again, I'm leaning towards abortion just because of my health. Like it may not kill me, but it's definitely not. Uh, mental health is another big one. Uh, it took an awful nosedive after having a baby. Um. I'd worry about my ability to take care of the kid if I ever got pregnant again. So let's say I still had my uterus right now and I got pregnant. Now, I'm I'm not for abortion. And if I had one, I would feel guilty forever. But I would do it. Because I feel like I owe it to my two children to exist. Well, okay, so what, what, was, the, what was the thing we were watching on Orange is the New We were doing the rewatch of Orange is the New Black the other night. And said that sometimes the best thing... Uh, be, oh, being it was the, best the part- argument that... When Roe versus Wade passed, twenty years after that, the the crime rate dropped suddenly, like a inexplicably. Lot. The crime rate drops because all the crackheads and all the poor people and all the people that weren't going to pay attention to their kids, all the people that were going to abuse their kids, a lot of them started having abortions, and all of a sudden the crime rate dropped because the best way to become a criminal is to be raised by shitty poor parents. Be raised by criminals. Or just to be poor. Yeah. Being, uh, poverty poverty do, it breeds crime. My kids are super high risk for uh, for crime because I had them young and because we're poor. It's just a fact. And your oldest is a crackhead. <laughs> ADHD isn't being a crackhead. <laughs> um, um, Catherine says I get that. Every oh, no, no, no. I, I had a... Oh, I, go ahead. I had another thing on there and I, I, was, I was trying to remember it. Um... Oh, oh, uh, talking about the the mental health thing. So, so that was the argument I saw against Roe versus Wade. So, there are misconceptions with Roe versus Wade because everybody assumes that they put they put abortions in there and they put limitations on when you can have abortions, right? Which is the twenty three weeks, the the term of viability, or whatever. And the the pro lifer argument against uh, the reason they want to overturn Roe versus Wade is because they say it's too liberal in its wording. Because what it did said up to a you can ha, you can have an abortion for any reason up to a certain point, which uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on the Roe versus we're talking about 23 weeks. I think that's what it states in Roe versus Wade. It may be less than that, but anyway, what Roe versus Wade actually states is that after the point of viability, you can only have an abortion for medical reasons deemed by a medical doctor. But what they were bitching about is one of those reasons can be mental health. And they said that was basically like giving the doctors a blank check to override any reason to deny abortion because they can just say it's for mental health reasons. And I I can see both sides of the argument for that. Okay, so if you're a pro-lifer, then you're like, well, that's bullshit because... Because all the women are out there claiming mental health when they like, just don't oh, want to... Oh, it's, it's going to make me depressed and blah, blah, blah. And they can, they can get through it. But here's the deal. I can also see the other side of that argument. Mental health is a really good reason to have an abortion. That's another argument that's really pertinent is a side argument to this is we don't, A, we don't understand consent. B, we don't have any kind of respect or we we don't think mental health is important. Which is crazy because your brain's an organ in your body. Yeah. But uh, the thing we we see mental health as this like I mean we make fun of millennials every day for 
needing like safe spaces and stuff, you know, because of mental health. Because yeah, f us for trying to take care of our mental yeah, health. Yeah, <laughs> like like people are going nuts and trying not to be psychotic and kill each other in the streets. And they're like, ha ha, look at that pussy over Snowflake. there. Fucking deal with your depression, bitch. You know, and it's like. Why are, you, why are you depressed? Well, you know, I've got three kids that I couldn't, you know. I've make, got three kids. I make 12000 a year. You know, and, and like if maybe if that person could have aborted the first one, you know, when they were raped by their dad, they might have some better mental health. Um, you, you just you have all these situations in there. And so that was one of the huge. Art, that's the loophole. It, it, and it is a loophole. If you have a doctor that's acting unethically, and that's the key to it, is we want to... And I'm sure wanna, that's a thing that happens. It is a thing that happens. We, we, but I think it's more rare than the whole pregnancy by rape thing. It is, and that's what I'm saying, is we want to shift the blame to the mom for that. The doctor's the one that signed off. If Say it's not really a risk to your mental health, right? Yeah. And the doctor's just like, well, that's what I'm going to put it down as. Guess what? You have an unethical doctor. Which one of these people should actually be punished? The the person asking or the person facilitating? Yeah. Because it sounds like that doctor needs his license pulled, not the law changed. Right? Agreed. And um, the last time I checked, psychologists and shrinks could not perform abortions. So, you know, what, what uh, obstetrician is going around... Just saying, uh, well, you know, I aborted the baby because it was going to be bad for the mom's mental health. I don't think this is a thing that's actually happening. Like, it's a thing on paper. It's another made-up argument. Yeah, it's it's one of those things on paper where it could theoretically happen. But I think it's like a one-in-a-million sort of like, scenario. My least favorite argument that doesn't happen is a chick just stumbles into the doctor's office at 30 weeks pregnant and goes, ah, I don't want this. Yeah, there, yeah there's no such thing as late-term abortions. There, there, not like in reality, there's they, not. Not like leisurely. No, not leisurely late term abortions. This is not a thing that happens. It's it's a thing that happens where the oh your baby's hydrocephalic and we yeah can't the, fix the this. mom like starts going into labor. Sorry, er anencephalic. The mom starts going into labor early at like thirty weeks. Gets in there and they're like, oh, there's horrible stuff happening. Your wife is dying. The only way we can save her is to do this procedure and that's what i was looking at beforehand is they count it as, as an abortion if you deliver. give if you deliver knowing it's gonna die okay so since we're getting into that what the, well the, i was the, gonna the say that i agree word. with kat that is the only male unfairness with this argument what, what oh is, the whole if they want to have it and blah, blah, the thing she said before oh yeah, yeah yeah i and see you know one of the one of the things that puts me on the pro-life side is that i think a dad should have some say in the the baby they create, right? But at the same time, there's the argument of you you don't know the dad or that relationship. But she's just saying it's the only male unfairness she sees in this whole argument, which yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, so. first trimester. That's yeah, that's viability. It's up to the point of viability. So second trimester, me medical reasons. Third trimester, emergency, which is also medical reasons and the thing is about third trimester abortions is lots of uh, health issues they can't see until then until the third trimester uh, cl uh clamps clamps yeah was what i was talking about earlier so it's preeclampsia and then eclampsia it's when your blood pressure is too high while you're pregnant the only treatment for this is delivering so if you're eclamptic at 16 weeks the only treatment for that dead baby yeah. If you're reclaimed to get 22 weeks. And the, wor and the wording of the new law says that even if the, the method of fixing the medical problem is delivery, knowing that the baby's going to die. No, not the new law, the definition of abortion. Oh, okay. Means that if you deliver at like 20 weeks, no one's going to die, they can count that as an abortion. Gotcha. So they want to rail against things that aren't even your fault. Yeah. It's like making miscarriage a crime. It, it's You can't. Well, Allie mentioned the Hyde Amendment. Apparently you can. Uh, and that's the legislative provision. Barring the use of federal funds to pay for abortion except to save the life of a woman or if the pregnancy arises from incest or rape. Can you say that in English? Government won't pay for your abortion unless something bad happened. Okay. Um, and how it's ludicrous to make the argument that government money covers abortion. Yeah, people talk about the government funding abortion all the time. They're using it for birth control. The government's just paying for this. It's free. They can't use those funds for abortion. It's illegal. 
that's another made up argument by the right wing. And if they were so worried about it, why why don't they let us, you know, have a uh, government funded actual birth control, which is like only twenty six bucks a month, which is a lot cheaper than abortions is birth control. You're causing your own problem, guys. So like Chris is talking about, late term abortions are usually wanted pregnancies with a defect that makes the fetus incompatible with life. It will make sure they die horrible and in pain. Uh, it's a mercy. So one of yeah, the, I don't think anybody carries a baby that long, and then like at the very ends, like ah, uh, you know what? And the one of the real common ones I see for this is anencephaly, and that's when the baby has formed nothing of the brain from here for it has no frontal lobe. It's going to die, but they can live for days, weeks, vegetables, yeah. Um, so they don't find this out until after the baby's viable, usually. Sometimes they can find it out beforehand. And I just can't imagine, like, I would feel guilty for the abortion, but I can't imagine giving birth to a baby that has anencephaly or Tay-Sachs disease or something horrible where they're going to be miserable. I just can't picture it. Well, then, But you know what the other side of that argument is going to be is the slippery slope argument. Well, then can you, should you be able to abort babies that... Then uh, it's genocide. Then we're Hitler. It's eugenics. Well, ah. no, yeah, they're going to say, what about kids with autism? What about kids with um, uh, Down syndrome? What about physical defects? Things like well, that. They do, they do a quad screen pretty early in pregnancy that tests for um, cerebral palsy, Tay-Sachs disease, um, Down syndrome, and one other, and I don't remember what it is. And they give you the option to abort. And my first kid, I had that test, and my second, I refused it because I knew I couldn't do it, even if it had one of those things. But um, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think I. And could, I'm not uh, a carrier for taste. Oh, cystic fibrosis. That's the other. Like one. I like I wouldn't ab- I wouldn't abort a child because of it. I knew it was going to come out autistic. No, not autistic. I might abort a kid if I knew it was going to severely have Down syndrome. Because I've worked with people in the mental health care system so long, I've seen the kind of horrible atrocities and abuses go on in that system, and I'm not sure if I could subject a child to that. But I'd also feel guilty for having the abortion, so I don't know. I, I mean, it is a rough argument, but it's this it's the same argument as the uh, the vaccine thing. So the people that think vaccines, vaccines cause, cause autism. autism. So you're you're basically saying it's better to have a dead kid than an autistic kid. You know, which I don't agree with. So if I if I apply that same logic to my thoughts on abortion, I don't think I would abort uh, a kid, you know saying i have kids you know because i'm a woman in this argument i don't think i don't think i would abort kids with like mental deficits and things like that because i would think that i will actually be a good parent and take better care of them you know i wouldn't let them if i become a victim of the system if i knew i was going to be around forever that's true but so many people that ended up in group homes, I know, parents and, and died. I, I do. I, no, I, I understand. And I think that's I a product that of, too. I think that's a product of uh, uh, working in the field. Uh, I wonder if my mom had that option because of the CP. I'm not sure if they can test for cerebral palsy because my, my, one of my stepbrothers has cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they can test for that in utero. I think, that, I think that's something that came around in the 90s anyway, not the 80s. It's, the quad screen's pretty old. Is it? Okay. Um, but cerebral palsy, it's like Down syndrome. It's so one way or the other. You can have cerebral palsy and be completely functioning normal. My stepbrother drives, and he's he's pretty midline on it. Um, or you can have it really bad and be in a wheelchair. It's... So one of one of the big arguments with this whole thing is, you know, it's a bunch of old white dudes regulating women's bodies. What if it was a panel of women and they came to the same conclusion? How would you feel about it? No. The same? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Cuz I mean, you would lose that ground to stand on because I don't I don't agree with the idea that a bunch of men are it, it, Here's here's my problem. Men, women, whatever. What I don't like is it's a bunch of non-medical professionals sitting around regulating people's medical shit. Like, all this crap with medical insurance, elective surgeries, birth control, like, every uh, medical marijuana, (laughs) cancer treatments, are mushrooms legal? All this garbage. Not one doctor has a voice in that room 
on the legislation. Oh, no, or it's, it's like the opiate legislations that went down, and my doctor was just railing against it. They have no say in this. They're not getting professional opinions. They don't want it because they don't want professional. It's the same thing with climate. It, it's like, well, have, did you consult somebody that does any kind of climate science? No, I talked to my neighbor. He, he, Joe Bob, he cooks meth in the trailer. Yeah. Out that, back of the Walgreens. That guy says it's a myth, you know, and it's uh, that I, I don't like the idea that non-medical professionals have a say in my medical care at all, period, whatsoever. And I saw this really interesting video the other day that uh, a friend of mine posted about um, socialism or whatever. And it, it was and it was a reasonable argument the guy was making, but stay with me till the end, right? Okay. Um, so he's like, okay, so... We don't like Trump. You know, the left is bitching. We don't like Trump. We don't like this totalitarian government. These people are evil, blah, 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 blah. And the, the liberal response is, let's make more socialism. So let's give more power to the government. They're doing a bad job, so let's give them more power. Oh, but it was okay under Obama. Uh, but ultimately, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter what your intentions are. He's right. If, if you get somebody in office that sucks, and we went full on socialism that way, socialized mess and all that crap, Ultimately, they could corrupt it. My problem with his argument, and I wanted to punch him in the throat, is I don't want full-on socialism. I don't want full-on socialized uh, a, a minis. We want a combo burrito. Yeah, yeah. We, we <laughs> want democratic socialism. It's not the same fucking thing, and they keep talking about it like it is. I don't want... I'm not against capitalism. Some things capitalism is great for, but if you have a totally capitalist economy... That fails 100% of the time. If you have a totally socialist setup... It fails. That fails 100% of the time. And that, and that's what they're failing like, to talk about. Like is, with dogs, mutts are better. Full, full bro dogs don't do so well. Yeah, our, we should have social services that are set up. That includes medical, that includes uh, certain like retirement benefits, things like that. Especially in a world where we're not allowed to have abortion, so we're just going to be pumping out more babies left and right. Who the fuck is going to take care of them financially? Well, when that's what right. Chris said. Special need kids and those with birth defects can still that can still survive through childhood can require more expensive care that parents may not be able to s provide. Yeah, but but we want to cut all our social services too. We want to get rid of your social security, which by the way is something you pay into, and they act like it's a drain on the economy, but it's a completely separate. Well, account. And people would have gotten mad at me if I, I'd had an abortion with Caitlin for being poor. Yet they yell at me in Walmart for using food stamps. Make up your damn mind. Yeah, um, poor isn't a, a good excuse to not have babies. Poor is a, uh, not a g good excuse for anything unless it works to the point of their argument. Is, well, if you're poor, you shouldn't be having babies. You won't let me not have babies. All you expect me to do is pump out babies like a goddamn slot machine, and then you yell at me for needing food stamps. Another argument I'd, uh, I mentioned on Facebook is uh, with the, the pro-gun crowd. They say over and over that legislating and controlling guns will not stop gun violence. Yet they seem to think that regulating and controlling abortion will stop abortion. Know. Which I do think making abortion illegal will lower the amount of abortion. It'll lower the amount of abortion. It's going to make a lot of other statistics like go, go through the yeah. first crime is going to go back up. And you're you're going to have more gun violence And now. you're going to have more women dying from trying to give themselves abortions. Um, oh, the uh, I know the thing with the Alabama. But, but deal. it's just insane that they can't see that these two arguments are similar. Because I said that to one guy on my mom's Facebook, and he was like, "I don't see how these are the same. They're not the same argument, but you're making the same point, dude." And I, just I, I know the I yeah. know the guy you're talking yeah, about. I want to shake him. Idiot. He is. He's a fucking moron. I don't. I think people should be licensed to be allowed to post on social media. The, the, pro the problem with the world is, right now, especially in the U.S. Everyone is, has a voice. <laughs> yeah, it's that First Amendment thing. I'm really rethinking that in a total Thanos style. Like, 
if I could get my hands on that Infinity Gauntlet, I might come to the same conclusion that Thanos did. Generational turnover. Just, <laughs> but um, one of the things that's really horrifying with the uh, the whole Alabama thing is it's not just stopping abortions in that state. If you're a resident of Alabama... They don't want Alabama, you to be able to leave the state. Yeah, if you go to Colorado, have yourself an abortion, they'll go send a lynch mob up to Colorado. And here's the deal, what's scary about that, right? So... You go do that, you're you're going to go on trial for doing that whole thing. They're going to bring the doctor in for the same thing. That's across state lines. That becomes a federal crime all of a sudden. And that means it doesn't matter if you have the death penalty in, in whatever state or whatever. That being federal, the stakes are way higher. Another interesting thing was that Trump's talking about not giving money to countries that allow abortion. Like stopping aid. You know what our favorite country is? What's America's favorite country that isn't us? Russia. Israel. Israel. America has always had a boner for Israel. I trace that back to the Bible. I blame Christianity. We just we just love Israel. You know what Israel has? Abortion. Abortion and the government pays for it. Yeah, but they only do it that old biblical way where David like holds the baby up. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to cut it in half since it's both of yours, you know, and they wait for somebody to yell. That, that wasn't David. Oh, I thought it was David. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man, I was, try, I was trying to throw out some um, Bible. And Mike says, it's ludicrous and unfair as it is. Everyone in Alabama, Georgia, et cetera, should move out of the state by January. So I saw this argument, and while I agree that they should flee the state, the kind of people that are having abortions are generally poor. Mm-hmm. You know what poor people can't do? Flee. Shit, I'm I'm not poor, and I couldn't just, like, pick up and move. Like, I don't have a job lined up for me somewhere. I can't just pick up and go. God, I'd love to just peace out to Canada. Yeah, if that if that wasn't, I, I would be in Canada right now if I could really just, boop, done, whatever. I can make money here. I have a house here. But that's not a thing I can do. I, I think what's going to happen is the suicide rate's going to go through the fucking roof in those states. I mean, like, officially move out of state before that bill takes effect in January. Just just change your home address. <laughs> so are they going to set up checkpoints? See, this was my question about the out-of-state thing. Are they repealing HIPAA? Because that's super important. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how... I know, it's in, I know it's in the legislation, but I don't know how they plan to handle it. And it sounds like... Not only does it now sound like an invasion of, you know, my being able to make my own medical decisions now it's an invasion of privacy but that's one of the things that was defined in roe versus wade is that privacy along with abortion is not in the constitution so um you are not entitled to privacy hipaa is a completely different thing so uh especially with the state line thing because since that suddenly becomes a federal uh jurisdiction sort of thing the feds can get into your medical records and stuff like that. So I don't think they're inhibited from finding out what you had done. So unless you can find you a good doctor in Colorado where, you know, it's just open season on abortions because they're all willy-nilly criminals there smoking dope, um, unless they doctor their records, um, you're going to get caught like that. You know, in in Handmaid's Tale, all the abortion doctors scrap their records. Uh, Chris says the Bible endorsed abortion. And it's Numbers chapter 5, if, if you want to know. In Numbers chapter 5, they say if a woman is pregnant and her husband suspects she's cheated, they're to feed her the bitter waters, which will yeah. kill the baby and make her unable to have children after the fact. I'm not going to use the Bible as any pro-argument well, at all because it contradicts itself constantly because there's a lot of places in there where it does talk against abortion, too. Even but, in later yeah. in the Bible, it talks about how a pregnant woman or a baby under one year, if they get killed, it's not worth the same as a I know, kid over and one. I get it. I get what she's saying. She's like, yeah, you can use the Bible it, against using, them in their own argument, but I don't like I don't Oh, like she using, said number five, Numbers chapter 5, 11 through 31. Yeah, I memorized that when I was arguing with all the Christians. I was like, I better just jot this down in my mind. I just won't even do it. When, when it gets into the Bible argument or whatever, I'm like, this has nothing to do with this argument and should not even be in this argument, and you're more an idiot because of it. Um, I haven't seen anything about appealing HIPAA. No, 
uh, they can't appeal HIPAA. That's that's not a thing they can do. Yeah, he did mention the ALC they is already they, gearing up to fight it, but it's uh, ACLU. I, but the, that's what I said. You said ALC. That's what he ACLU. I don't know. Okay, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, right? Am I right? Am I wrong? Now I'm confused. My whole world's ending. But what yeah, what they, I do know is it's 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 it's, about it's state the, law though, so they're gonna have a hard time fighting or whatever because you know uh, states can make up their state uh, rights. Yeah, states rights make state up their rights. Laws, but, and here's the stupid thing. So this is this is mainly this whole argument's a stupid. Thing. The whole argument's a stupid thing, and it's a Republican argument too. And so, what is the point of Republican? Uh, it's supposed to be small government, right? So why? Are we pushing for this heavy fucking and, federal regulation of wombs? And this and is when I feel the need to mention Tommy Laren. Right, hold on. Right wing commentator for a long time now. But she's posting about how this law is too restrictive and unfair. And people are like, oh, Tommy Laren a broke rock clock right twice a day. She was fired from Fox News for being pro abortion. Not pro-abortion, but pro-choice. Because as much as I hate her, and I don't like her. No. She's a trash human. She's a Republican. She believes in small government. She does not think they should be involved in those choices. I don't think she thinks any of those things. I think her script tells her to think. No, that's why she got fired from Fox. Was for saying that she didn't think they should regulate that because it wasn't the government's right. Which I think is, as much as I hate her, it's a Republican ideal. Mind your business. Yeah, actually, at a basic level, I don't have a problem with... Oh, no, Mike, I was just confused that I might have it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a problem with the idea of small government uh, to an extent. I, 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 I do. I do. I, do. Really... I want them all up in my health care. <laughs> as long as it makes me able to afford it. I, but see, th- those are so, to me those are social services. These are these are things that should just be accessible to everybody, and I don't think it's them going in and like regulating it for the individual. That's putting out a big regulation that's kind of open, so that they make sure it's regulated and affordable to everybody. But they shouldn't be deciding what's going on in your individual care. Like that guy that was arguing before for you know for the far left versus the far right or whatever, and he, he was just kind of generalizing it. We want something in the middle. Yes, I want universal health care. I want, I, want, I want these universal amenities that are out there, but I don't want them so regulated that people get to decide exactly how I use them. I want them available to me for when I need them and in like some sets of basic criteria, not restrictive criteria. I think a lot of the problem is that middle ground has ceased to exist. There is no middle ground. Because I've got a friend it's, And that's why we'll ultimately fail. I've got a friend who's middle ground. Um, He went to high school with me, and he made a comment about how he disagrees with abortion morally, but he does not feel like it's the government's right to interfere with it. And I was like, hey, a middle ground person, that's so rare. Yeah. Um, I I believe in small government and certain things like economic legislation, regulation, things like that. Um, But I do do think there's a place for big government, too. Like, there, there are both sides of that table. And it's a bipartisan thing, but even people that are claiming to be bipartisan aren't bipartisan anymore. They're just using it as a platform so that somebody will, oh, wait, let's listen to him. He might be, you know, and and I say he because, you know, women really, in respect of this topic, don't have any kind of voice. You have AOC and all the other ones that are, you know, in in government right now, but really they're just getting dumped on hardcore and that and it's and i find it just completely amazing that the person that got this pushed through in alabama and is championing this thing is a freaking woman all the men that wrote all the guy people that wrote it were men but the woman is the one who signed i mean really they're they're being they're being paid off by their lobby by the lobbies well i also think that a lot of women are very right-wing and very christian and very anti-abortion i come across them all the time I don't know. I have I have a really rough time with it because it's a it's a moral argument, and I don't think the morals have shouldn't be in the argument. Like when you argue anything else, you're you're not you're not arguing the the moral side of it, and it's it doesn't matter. It's not my concern. You know, I don't. I don't know. We should wrap up. Final thoughts. 
final thoughts is I think this is the beginning of the end. I really like that Mimi post. Like, wow, Hulu's getting really. <laughs> hey, I like this new feature on Hulu. You can look out the window and see the next season of Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, yeah it's a little horrifying when my pro life mom is posting about how crazy this is. I worry. Yeah, and um, I worry about my daughter growing up in this world. I, I worry that your husband thinks that Handmaid's Tale couldn't be a thing. Oh, yeah, my, my husband made this comment, and I love Steven, but sometimes he's just goofy. Handmaid's Tale could never happen here. But the interesting thing about that show, or that book that Margaret Atwood wrote, is that she never she didn't include anything in it that had not happened Previous, in the history of the world. Previously happened. And if you want proof this can happen here, look at pictures of Saudi Arabia in the 70s. All the women walking around in shorts. And suddenly, that's not a thing anymore. This is a thing that could happen here. I'm not chicken little. The sky's not falling, but it potentially could. This is a thing you that know, could happen. We may be looking 10 steps ahead at the worst possible scenario, but it's not like we're not on that path. And, you know, before the Holocaust happened, right, you, you don't think there was like one or two people going, man, I bet they're going to lock all of us up in cages in gas us all. Oh, no, that could never happen. The, the, no one would ever let that happen. That's it's a, the one slippery slope argument that exists. And, and then it happened. You know, there's, you know, and I don't want to be the guy that connects everything back to Hitler, but there's just multiple. But everything connects back to Hitler. It's true. But it, so many, so many points in history is where like a few people, it, it, it was never not foreseen. It's just not written about in history because history is written by the, the winner. Mm hmm. But there's always instances where somebody said, hey, you know, if, if we keep going down this path where we keep denying people their human rights and we keep deciding that we know what's best for everybody or that, that this one person is who we should follow to set the compass for all this, it always ends in some kind of tragedy, some kind of revolution, some kind of war. And there's always somebody that stood up and said those things, ultimately but weren't they listened they to. they were crazy. And then the fucking thing happened. And guess what? It happens in that book that everybody likes to talk about, the Bible, a few times. Yeah. So much so that there was an Old Testament and a New, New Testament, Testament, and they just put them together, and they're like, no, it's the same book, I promise. Um, not to relate it back to The Handmaid's Tale, but there's another meme I like, where it's like, you remember the in The Handmaid's Tale where they do the flashback scenes, and it's like everything is normal, but you can tell some shit's about to go real wrong? We're there. Yeah, we're we're that dot on the timeline. I'm re it, it, there are like four major things going on in the world right now that I just wake up at two in the morning <laughs> every day with existential dread. This the medical regulations, global warming. Global warming is like number one because <laughs> I I don't I don't in the grand scheme of the world I don't care whether or not they're regulating if you can have babies or not. We're trashing the planet. We're, we're going to be dead in the next 60 years. What's the other two? Um, th there's that uh, regulation of uh, health and cut the mic, cut the mic. I don't know. No. Uh, um, I, there's two other things, but I can't think of them right now. Uh, David says Pat Robinson to said it was too far. Yeah, yeah. Once again, with the broken clock being right twice a day. Chris says I have a lot of anti-abortion, single-issue voter women in my face. Yeah, I'm very familiar with the... Uh, crazy i'll vote for anyone as long as they're against killing babies the only reason i ever watch fox news is so that i can watch one of the anchors snap to reality for a quick second oh like, God, like, yeah because that always makes headlines quicker than anything when when fox says something against trump somehow it's like you just see the light come back on in that commentator's eyes and they're like this is all wrong what am i doing oh my god no this is gonna affect me <laughs> <laughs> their eyes are rolling around like a slot machine oh my god yeah but uh well it's always interesting to see them come out of character and just snap into reality for a few seconds before they go oh, i gotta I gotta read the huckabee sanders thing <laughs> uh <laughs> okay well thanks for watching yeah, um, I don't think we said anything useful. I think this was mostly just a... A, a rant? A bitch fest, yeah. And I had nothing better to do, so... I like your hair. Thanks. I think I think everybody liked your hair. Yeah. Uh, it's a big hit. I still feel awkward about the hair. Do you, I hit M bumper or start bumper? 
Uh, you're going to hit exit bumper and you're going to turn down the volume. But that's, that's how I, I don't this. actually know when we're doing another episode of this because things have been crazy. Casey's working a ton and I've had a flare and Allie works. So I, I don't know. I can't promise an episode next week. And I've got an abortion scheduled for next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try, but. To have an abortion no, scheduled I, for I next week? I don't have the uterus, you idiot. <laughs> Um, I'm going to try to do an episode next week on Thursday around 7 p.m. Unless Allie wants to come in and do one early. Okay. Okay, so hopefully I'll see you next week. Maybe not. I don't know. But thanks for watching.